Welcome back to part two of our brand new Stealth Recon um, build video. And now I'm going to start working on the center frame sections. I've already done my motor mounts in part one, all my booms. And the first thing you need to grab in your kit is the hex driver, which they Moffy Weecopter happily include for you. It's a 1 16th hex driver. Um, and it is used for all these little M2 stainless steel screws that come with every scarab kit. And if you start doing a lot of scarab builds, you'll become very familiar with these screws. Previous kits, these have been different lengths for different positions, but they're just supplying the one length now. The other thing we need at this point in time are these little pins, the frame spacer pins. Between those screws and those pins, that is pretty much everything that holds all the scarab stuff together. The other thing we get in this strip is the uh, boom mounts. And there's a slight change to how we do the boom mounts on this kit, which I'll get to in just a minute. The first thing we need to do so you need to add our pins to our base plate, put the others away. These pins onto our base plate for the boom mounts to fit over the top. And also, so we're gonna have four boom holders for the motor going in the four corner positions. They're easy to spot these rectangular slots because the top part of the boom holder has a raised rectangular section of it that will sit into that part of the plate. Okay, like so. All right. So we're gonna have our four lower boom mounts that we have to fit. And each one of these needs four of these pins screwed into the base plate to hold it. We're also going to be adding one of these black Delrin boom mounts into the nose. And that holds our camera mount. And in this kit, it includes the brand new Jello Killer 8 ball camera mount, uh, which you can get as an upgrade for older, uh, for anybody who's got an older scarab. Uh, I had uh, the pleasure of doing a before and after video shoot on the weekend and all I can say is that is it's a no-brainer if you want to run a camera particularly a GoPro on any scarab if you don't already have the Jello Killer mount get one you really need to do it all right so so we need to add the four pins for each one of these mounts okay so that's what we're gonna do we're gonna start with one of our little M2 screws. Now when you're using these screws, you want to really make sure that they're solidly placed into the driver. Uh, a lot of people find they strip the heads out or they, they reckon they're no good. What you rip that now is actually really solidly onto the driver. If you give it a good solid push, it stays. So, um, with my beetle, my scarab beetle aiming forwards, I'm gonna start on that corner, bit of heat, bit of Loctite on the screw, and add that pin. Okay, now I'm not just going to nudge it up. I'm not going to make it absolutely solidly tight at the moment. Just notice there's actually a slight difference with this bottom plate. Uh, on the later version, on on more recent version top plates, one of the four holes for these pins and the top plate has been left drilled oversized so you can actually permanently mount the screw into the pin. And I just noticed the bottom plate has the fourth hole also over, over drilled. So that means we're actually only gonna fit three of these pins at this point in time on each one of these mounts. Of course this screw that I'm using to attach it would fall straight through that larger hole. So, and I'll show you why that larger hole is there when we get down to adding the booms to this frame. 
So I've put three pins on there and they're snug but they're not rock solid. And the reason they're not rock solid is what I want to do is actually slide that block over the top and that aligns them. That makes them make, make sure they actually sit at the right sort of angles. At the right angles. And now I'm going to go through and tighten those three screws up. Okay. So that's the bottom half of that boom mount. Done. Okay. Some of you who have been watching the evolution of the Scarab kits is probably going, huh? Why are we mixing and matching and why are we going back to these slightly heavier red alloy ones? Well, this is a new uh, concept Quinton's come up with and I've got to, I've got to say I really like it. Um, what he's doing is he's leaving the metal one in the bottom and putting the lighter Delrin in the top, Delrin mount on the top. So you get black at the bottom and red at the uh, bottom. Red at the bottom, black at the top. Why would he do that? Well, that is actually a very simple explanation. On the quads, particularly the recon, we use these carbon fibre land this carbon fibre landing gear skid, and it screws into holes in the bottom of the blocks. Now, those screws into the Delrin work very nicely, but if you start having too many heavy landings, you start pulling the screws out of the plastic blocks. So to stop that happening, what we're doing is, he's doing is he's including the metal blocks back for the bottom half. So when the skid screws into that, it's a screw into metal. So it's going to be just a little bit more robust and a little bit better wearing for your hard, hard landings, having a metal block at the bottom, but we're also having a bit more of our weight reduction advantage by having the plastic block at the top. Okay, anyway, I'm going to go away and I'll fit these up and I'll come back short. Cool, so that's all done. I've done my pins, I've got the Delrin block sitting at the front, I've got the alloy block sitting at the sides. Now the next, and this is a really important uh, step you need to do, is I'm going to take a, one screw, one of the screws, and pop it onto my driver. And I'm just going to go around, and I'm going to screw it into every one of these pins. And what I want to do is just make sure, because some of the pins sometimes, um, the thread in them isn't great. I mean, they actually give you spare pins with every kit, because... You know, you do get a dud one where the thread isn't great in the pin and you need to just basically throw it away. So what I'm doing at this point in time is I'm just going to go around and I'm going to drive a screw into the top of the pin and screw it down and I'm going to do that with every one of these pins sitting through the board. Because if I don't do this and one of these pins has uh, a problem with the thread or the hole or there's some gunk in there, if anything like that happens and I need to actually replace the pin later, I've got to pull the whole thing apart again to actually get this pin back out. So I'm going, to, this is a very necessary step. You need to go through and just make sure that the screw does go into and very smoothly runs down through the thread of every pin on the frame. All right, I've done that side. I'll come back and do the rest of myself in a minute. I'm just going to go quickly digress slightly and have a look at the extended tail that's going to go on this frame. Okay, previous on previous kits, um, we've usually attached the extended tail to a block. In this case, what we're going to do is we're going to just screw um, through the frame or the tail and into a pin. Okay. Now you have some choice with this kit. You can actually either mount the tail on top or below the plate. And likewise, on the top plate, you have the choice of mounting the extension above or below. Okay? So you can go either way with that. I'm going to do it with just to see how it goes with the tail plate on the top of the bottom plate. 
The reason I'm going to do that is I'm going to have, depending on how much camera and stuff I've got hanging off the front, I'm going to have a lipo sitting around here. And it's easier for the Velcro to sort of step down than step up, I think. So that's the way I'm going to go with this. So I'm going to do it that way. So this ends up on top of this. So what I'll do is I'll grab a screw, bit of Loctite, pop it through the hole in the base plate, pop it through the corresponding hole in the tail. This is going to be a bit tricky doing the first one. The second one's going to be a lot easier. And add my pin. Okay. Just finger tight for now will do. Now I need to grab second screw. Through there. And onto there. And lucky last. Now, this pin's going to end up sitting a couple of mil higher than the tops of the other pins because of this extra thickness of carbon involved here. Don't let that worry you because these pins don't, the pins that go through the blocks don't um, end up hard up against the top plate anyway. They actually, you end up with a gap in the boom holder blocks of a couple of mil. So the top of this pin never does quite hit the carbon. So I think doing this plate on the on the, the top of the carbon, on top of the base plate, is going to um, end up with the pins. These pins are gonna end up at the same height as, as those others when I button that up. Alright, so that's basically my frame done to that stage. That's as much as I want to do at this point in time with that. So I'm going to come back in a little while and go through starting to actually get some electronics into this. So back soon.